Konnichiwa, Japan fans. Today's show, we're going to talk about friction in sales. So let's get going. This is the seventh year of the Sales Japan Series podcast, broadcasting around the world from the Beverly Hills of Japan, Minato-ku here in downtown Tokyo. It is chic central. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, Dale Kanye, Tokyo franchise owner, the president of Dale Kanye Tokyo Training, and the three-time best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, which is Zaegyo in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery. Plus, stop wasting money on training in Japanese, training there, okane wo muru ni suru wa yamimashou, and all are available on Amazon. In this podcast, I want to help you to survive and, even better, thrive in business. One, sell more and do it more easily. Two, exceed your targets. In fact, blow up your targets. Three, make some serious, serious money. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn, but we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Libsyn. Unlike many other hosting organizations, Libsyn have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on Apple Podcasts. Mondays, the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show podcast. Tuesday, the Presentations Japan series, and every second Tuesday, the Business Tatsujin no Oshie Show. Wednesdays, the Sales Japan series. Thursdays, the Leadership Japan series, and every second Thursday, the Business Pro Podcast Show. Fridays, the Japan Business Mastery Show podcast. Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews. Now, this is episode number 343, 343, and today we're talking about reducing buying friction in Japan. Victor Antonio is one of my favorite podcasters on sales, and he recently had an episode on reducing friction in the sale. It's got me thinking about how would that work in Japan? A big barrier to sales in Japan is the culture. I remember a business contact of mine, longtime Tokyo resident, who moved from Japan to Hong Kong a few years ago, pre-pandemic. I asked him what differed from doing business there compared to here. He noted a big difference in Hong Kong was business people there were interested in doing business. I asked him what he meant by that. He replied, in Japan, when you go to a networking event, people are not interested in meeting new people all that much. There's a lot of hesitancy in Japan and a fear of new people they don't know. In Hong Kong? Everyone is interested to find out there's a way to do business together and build their businesses. I thought about that statement, and actually it's true. When I go to the Japanese language only business networking events, as opposed to the International Chamber of Commerce events conducted in English, there's a big difference. At the Japanese only events, very few people will walk up to someone they don't know and introduce themselves. I do it. But I'm a gaijin, and the same rules don't apply to me as much as they do to Japanese business people. I have had to train my Japanese sales team to walk up to people they don't know and meet them, because left to their own devices, they would do what everyone else does, which is not all that much. The accepted play here is to seek people you already know and talk with them, and if they can introduce you to someone they know, then that is how you meet new people. I noticed with my team... They would meet someone new, and they get stuck with that person all evening. They did this because that was a lot easier than bounding up to total strangers and meeting them. I always had a debrief with them on how many business cards they exchanged to see how hard they worked the room. The latter, one of my favorite activities to find potential clients. In the early days, it was pathetic. But after years of water on rock, they're now pretty good. The point is, the way things work here... Strangers are, by definition, radioactive and have to be treated with great caution. The other point is you can network here in a Japanese context and find new buyers if you have the leadership guts to make sure it happens rather than hoping it will happen organically. The fear of the unknown extends to decision-making being slow and tedious. 
No one gets fired for missing a business opportunity, failing to save money, or not identifying new areas of growth. I was talking to a foreign business executive who worked as a CFO for a Japanese company in Europe. He had identified a way to reduce their expenses, but his Japanese country head boss would never agree to it because it varied from what had been done in the past by his predecessors. In other words, there was a risk of a fresh approach being weighed against the additional benefit. Japanese business conservatism identified doing nothing as the safest decision on his watch while leading in that foreign climb. Find out more. Come back from the break. Our show today is brought to you by our public courses, but we also do custom in-house programs as well as we do them in both Japanese and English. We do them face-to-face in our super safe classroom and we do them live online. The show today is being brought to you by on the 9th of June, our Winning with You Leadership Selling Program. How to close a deal. How to deal with the pushback. How to present the solution. How to find out what they need. How to build a rapport and trust. Everything you need to know in sales is in this program. Also on the 9th of June and later on the 11th of June during our Dale Kenny course, building your comfort zone so you can take on more, do more, be more. Dealing with your stress, because now you're doing more and being more, it's more stressful. How to be a better leader, better communicator, better with people, more people skills. Excellent program. On the 15th of June, we're doing a high impact presentations program. Two instructors, two days, everything videoed, massive feedback, lots and lots of one-on-one coaching in this program. This is how you become a person of persuasion. Go to our website at www.dale-carnegie.co.jp. Get my best-selling books, Japan Sales Mastery, which in Japanese is Zaegyo, This is the Bible for selling in Japan. Japan Business Mastery, Japan Presentations Mastery, plus Stop Wasting Money on Training, which in Japanese is Training De Okane wo Muru ni Sunu wa Yami Mosho, and all are available on Amazon. If you like learning by watching videos, we have nearly 2,000 there for you at Tokyo Japan Balcony TV on YouTube. We release three TV shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, that's the premier business show on Japan every Monday, Tokyo time. Fridays, we have the Japan Business Mastery Show. And on Saturdays, we release Japan's top business interviews. Where I interview leaders from small and medium enterprises all the way up to the corporate captains of industry on one topic, leading in Japan. Every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro Telebi Show. You can email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. Welcome back. Invariably, a change in supply represents a risk. And if we are the ones trying to break into the supply chain as a new entrant, we have to make sure we can reduce that conservatism as much as possible. The people we are talking to in the company are only a small section of the decision-making spider's web inside the firm. We need to know what the other parts of the spider's web are concerned about, and try to address those worries so that they can buy from us. It's not always easy to pry that information out of the buyer, but we have to keep hammering away at it or we will never move the deal forward. We need to get on that first rung of the supply ladder, thus establishing our credibility and reliability as a trusted partner. This will require some creativity, far beyond what will be needed in other markets, and we will have to convince our overseas headquarters that this is what we need to do to crack the Japanese market. Often they are not supportive enough, but they do a lot of complaining about the lack of results. We find ourselves caught in a dilemma without relief. We might offer a results-based deal, where they pay nothing unless we deliver for them according to an agreed outcome. Getting agreement on how success will be measured is critical for this to work, which in some instances can be devilish to achieve. There may also be quite a delay between the start of the process and the results coming in, which can be hard to swallow, but swallow we must. We could offer a 100% money-back guarantee to make the decision easier. 
This won't recover the time spent, but it will keep the investment safe in money terms and it won't show up as a financial disaster if things don't work out as expected. Trial shipments are always good to test the system, quality and consistency of supply. The just-in-time system has spread to many industries. Clients are not holding expensive warehousing space anymore and they transfer that cost to us, the seller. The initial cost of the buyer of a trial shipment is quarantined and the scale is kept small to limit any blowback if things go wrong. Therefore, reliability is key because if something does go wrong, the entire construct comes crashing down and people become very unhappy very quickly. When I was in market entry, the first contracted delivery of a garden product literally sailed without the goods on board and the Japanese importer was livid. We had just burned his carefully handcrafted decades-old supply chain and even worse, his trust component with his buyers. It was a total disaster. All of this free stuff costs money and adds time, but it helps reduce the friction. Remember, we need to be focused on the reorder rather than the sale. We need to get that first foot in the door in order to make it swing wide open for us. Look for ways in your industry where you can reduce the friction in the sale and make it a no-brainer for the buyer. Thank you for joining the Sales Japan series. If you found the program useful, then please work on your karma and share this with your family, friends and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Immediately, apply what you've learned today. Go out there and survive. Use it and make some serious money. Bucks, dough, moolah, coin, dosh, lolly, reddies, smackers, earners, and bread and honey. Remember, I'm in your corner, committed to your success here in Nippon. <laughs>